All right, we're going to go through all of, make sure nobody distracts. We're, we're going to go through all of the different families and functions and full analysis of them because I know that you need to keep seeing them again because this stuff is hard at first. There's a lot of information. Um, don't try to like memorize all of this stuff. I usually memorize what they mean, like what all the different things mean, like what domain means, what range means what even or odd means, and I have the picture in my head. I know the function and its picture, and then I determine everything based off of it. So I literally, if I'm trying to remember the end behavior of a cube root function, I see what the cube root function goes, and that's how I know what it should be. So if I can read these things, this is all the information I need to have. I need to have the name of the function, its formula, domain, range, the y-intercept, whether it's on two, one to one, or neither, whether it's, well, it's not going to be either because if I make the range, it's going to be on two. Um, whether it's an even function, odd function, or neither, whether it's, look, if there's any maxes, any mins, it's decreasing interval, increasing interval, what the left end does and what the right end does. I don't memorize all that stuff for all these functions. I remember what the function looks like, and I remember what these things mean. And then I can go there. The beauty of doing it that way is you, I don't just, I'm not limited to just these nine functions and all that stuff. If you give me any function and I can do transformations and picture what the graph looks like, I can then do all of this stuff for all of those functions. That's where it's going to be handy. That's when I like, I've gone from memorization to knowledge. And that's where we're trying to go. So let's see if we can get through all nine of our basic functions in algebra two. All right. So the first one's a linear function and he goes, Kind of like that. He's a line going through the origin, slope of one. All right. This guy's the linear function. His formula is f of x equals x. By the way, this is a video, which means if I start going too fast, you pause, you absorb, you think about it, you see how things go, and then you hit play again. Rewind, fast forward as you need. I'm going to try to go a little bit fast. The domain is all real numbers. So I know how to write all real numbers using set builder or interval notation. All right. The range is all real numbers. So y such that y is real. Uh, the y-intercept can hit zero, zero. Some of this stuff I framed in here. This function is on to and it's one to one. Check both. This function is not even. It is odd. It's not even. It has no max. It has no min. It's never decreasing. It is increasing the entire time. It's always going up. Negative infinity. Excuse me. Positive infinity. The left end is going all the way down. First, the left end is all the way up to negative infinity. It goes all the way left, and it's left end is all the way down to negative infinity. The right end goes all the way to the right, positive infinity, and the right end goes all the way up. That's the linear function. I'm sorry, I wrote some of that stuff small. The next function is the absolute value function. Sorry. It's like the linear function, except all these negatives have been shifted up there. So this is absolute value. The formula is f of x equals the absolute value of x. Its domain is all real numbers. Its range is all numbers that are zero or bigger, all the pop. All the non negatives, so y greater than or equal to zero, range starts at zero, those have corners there. The y intercept still is zero, zero. It's on to, it is not one to one. It is an even function, it is not odd and it's not neither. It has no max, it has a minimum at the origin. It is decreasing from negative infinity until zero, close bracket. Remember, anytime it's actually a point I can hit it, on increasing, decreasing, it gets bracket. Increasing 
from 0 to infinity. The left end goes all the way to negative infinity. That's my x value. The y value is all the way up past the ceiling. That's positive infinity. The right end goes all the way to the right. And it goes all the way up. Absolute value. Again, I'm going fast because you can pause. Next function is our step function. Uh, it's also the floor function, the greatest integer less than or equal to. Notice I'm not scaling this in any, I'm not tick marking this at all. These are closed circles on the left, open circles on the right. It's the greatest integer less than or equal to that number. So sometimes it's called the greatest integer. It's kind of funny that the floor function is like the greatest integer function, but it's the greatest integer that is less than or equal to that thing. So in this case, if it's a decimal, if it's a half, the greatest integer that's less than or equal to is zero. Um, which also means it's a round down function. Whatever the number is, I've rounded down to the next integer. That also works. Um, I'm going to call it a step function. It's also sometimes called an integer function, floor function. And all the ceiling function, all these guys would be up here. And you'll see, it's a little bit different. We're, we're mainly focused on the floor function. Uh, the formula, f of x. You know it's a floor because it has ledges on the bottom. Remember, he was like a video game guy that was jumping from ledge to ledge, and my X is jumping from ledge to ledge. My domain is not exciting, it's all real numbers. I can round down any number. I can take any number and round it down. Negative infinity, so positive infinity. This one gets ugly. My range, I'm only going to have integers as answers my double stem z or in the rotation this is fun goes on forever to the left it hits negative one then it hits zero then it hits positive one and after three i've gotten tired so i just say it keeps on going both ways from there why is that it actually hits zero zero that's nice it's on to it is not one to one because if I had a half, I don't know if that came. If I got a zero as an answer, I don't know if that came from zero or if it came from a half. Remember, one to one means if I have, if I give you a y value, you know exactly what x value it came from, and I can give you any y value that's listed in the range. That's one. That's one to one and on to right there. They are both. All right. It's not an even function because this stuff's not going on. It's not an odd function because if I look at this guy. Through here, it'd have to be over here too. And it's this guy it become this guy, but it wasn't. It doesn't reflect perfectly through the origin, so it's not. It's not odd. It wants to be. It looks really close. If I put like a center line through here, it'd be really, really close, but it's not. Um, maximum none. I can always go taller. Minimum none. I can always go shorter. Decreasing, increasing. This, just so that like people don't call me liar later on, it's never strictly decreasing or strictly increasing. Every flat zone, it's technically doing both. If you're like, it all depends on what, how your class defines increasing and decreasing. In this case, I'm going to say because these are flat spots and I've been doing strictly increasing or decreasing, it's not doing either. Right? Um, if it's here, it's flat. At that point, it's up here. You could make an argument that it's increased at that instant from here to there, but it's not really connected. Just, just continuous functions sometimes can be tricky and weird on increase and decreasing. So for this class, we're going to say none, just so that we can avoid a whole bunch of other issues. Just know that in some other classes, you're going to have this thing increasing and decreasing all the time, which gets really fun, like conceptually. Um, just know, different math classes sometimes use different definitions. We use the definitions that work for that situation. All right, 
Um, in this case, we're going to be looking at deep, just to make it simpler, since we're first dealing with increasing, decreasing zone, decreasing thrust winds can only be decreasing, strictly decreasing. An increasing thrust winds can only be increasing, strictly increasing. When flat, we're going to just not mention that. You're going to mention that in your future, but right now we're not. The left end, it goes all the way to the left, so I have negative infinity. And it goes all the way down, which is also negative infinity. The right end, it goes all the way to the right, which is positive infinity. And the right end, it goes all the way up when it goes all the way to the right. That's the step function. He's tricky. He's weird. He has, like, different features in different classes depending on your class. So whenever you get into a class and you see the step functions are involved in there, you want to be really careful and pay really close attention to how your instructor has defined increasing, decreasing, max and min. Like these, it has relative max and mins all along every single flat spot here, but no absolute max and mins. And you can't just start listing all the relative max and mins because every single infinite spot between this section are all maxes and mins. So really pay attention to professor if you ever introduce step functions because that's going to be important. Here, we're going to do our best to show you the problems, but not test you on all the problems because I like you a little bit so far. All right, let's ignore that step function because he's a blast. All right, um, after that, we go to the quadratic function. It looks kind of like that. His formula is f of x equals x squared. Uh, his domain is all the numbers. That happens a lot. Not always, but a lot. The domain. His domain is always going to be real numbers. The class's domain is not always going to be real numbers. All right. Range. He hits everything from zero and bigger. So as long as y is greater than or equal to zero, we're good. The y-intercept, he hits the origin. That's nice. He is onto. He is not one-to-one. -one because if I give you this spot, you don't know if it came from this x or that x. He's an even function. By the way, even functions typically aren't one-to-one. -one. Not odd, not neither. Maximum, none. Minimum, right here at the origin. He is decreasing from negative infinity. I just wrote that backwards. From negative infinity until zero. Close, Frank. Um, increasing from zero to infinity. The left end, he goes all the way to negative infinity, x values. The y value, for f is like your y. Your y value, when he's on the left end, he goes all the way up. X values on the right end go all the way to negative, go all the way to positive infinity. That would have been a kitchen. Um, the function goes all the way up at that point. That's the quadrat. He's going to be fun later on. He gets interesting when you start messing with him and changing him. His basic one's not super interesting, I don't think. He has really cool building back, so he does cool stuff when he goes inside other functions, I think. Now, uh, the next one's the cubic. That guy's not straight up and down. F of x equals x cubed. His domain is all real numbers. Domain, infinity to positive infinity. His range is all real numbers. Negative infinity to positive infinity. Y intercept, he hits the origin. He is on to, and he's one to one. Check, check. He's not an even function. He is an odd, which means he's not even. Max, no max. You might be tempted to do a relative in there, but none. Min, no min. There's no, there's no limit to how high I can go, and there's no bottom. You can be what you want to be with a cubic function. Uh, decreasing? No, he's never decreasing. Not even right in there. If you transform him enough, he can decrease. And he can have relative means and maxes. 
uh, increasing forever, always going up, even when he thinks he's slowing down. He's like a, I think if you think he's like a marathon runner, like he starts off with, you're ever in a marathon, and like they, everybody goes, and everybody takes off really fast. And then they remember that there's 26.2 miles to go, and they're getting tired. And they're like, oh, wait a minute, let me get into my pace, let me get into my pace, let me get into my pace. Here, this is one of the water stands. They're like, you ever see the marathon runners that are running and they drag the water, but they can't quite stop. They're slowing down because they're sloshing water all over themselves. And some of that's on purpose. And some of that's just because, you know, I'm running and they're trying to drink and that's what we're, but they slow down a whole lot, but they're still moving because they will not stop because they have to finish that marathon. And then they're going and they're just picking up, they're passing people, picking up speed, picking up speed. And there's like, Ooh, the finish line, let me run really fast. That's how I see the cubic function. It's a marathon. Which is also really good because I ever think about running a marathon, but it's not gonna happen. It seems to go on forever. All right. Left end, negative infinity. And it goes all the way that way, even though it does look like it. And it goes all the way down. Right end goes all the way to the right. And it goes all the way up. Cube root function, I have a fun marathon analogy now with you here. Cube root function f of x equals the cube root of x, the domain, all real numbers. The range, all real numbers. Y intercept, it hits the origin. It is onto, and it's one to one. It's not even, it is odd. It's not even. Max, no max. We'll just write that none. Min, no min. Decreasing, never. Increasing, always. He's always getting faster, right? Left end goes all the way to the left. That's your x value. Was I in front of this the entire time? I hope I haven't just blocked everything. Um, it goes all the way down. The right end goes all the way to the right, and it goes all the way up. Cube root function, now this would be, um, actually I had a friend, that's not 100% true. My brother-in-law had a really good friend, but they both ran a marathon together. Um, I actually don't know that it was a full marathon. Knowing him was probably half a marathon, but since they ran together, that's like running a full marathon, because he did one half, and his friend also did one half. Two halves make a whole. Um, but he, when he was out there, he just started, the gun went off, everybody took off, and they started off with a nice slow jog. And they were going, and then some time through the whole thing, they started picking up rhythm. Now, they're always going faster, because it's a cube root function, and they're like always like, I can make it, I can make it. So they're always going faster, right? So they're going faster, and then he's going, and right around here is where all the cameras and all that stuff were. Well, they were like, ooh, cameras are coming up. Let's start picking up some speed. Let's start passing people, start passing people, start passing people. And it's like, oh, the cameras aren't watching us. They're still going faster, but they're like, they're in, their speed increasing is just slowing down a little bit. Like, they're not picking up. They're not going as, they're always going faster. They're not gaining as much speed, right? So I'm like going an extra oomph, going an extra oomph, and then I'm going just a note, a little bit. Right, so they're picking up a little bit more and more. Funny, awesome story. The brother was best friend. They both ran a half marathon. After about the halfway point, the brother's best friend looked and he had a, now this guy's like 25 at the time. There was a 12 year old kid running with him. He looked at him and he said, I can't finish less. And the guy offered and bribed the 12 year old kid. He said that he would buy him lunch anywhere as long as the 12 year old kid did not leave him behind and made sure that he did not finish last. So the 12 year old kid made like, it wasn't like a McDonald's meal, like he did the kid right. They brought him out, him and his family had like a nice 
sit down, good lunch, because the 12 year old kid did not let my brother in law's best friend finish last in the half marathon. He stayed behind him. I think they finished like, like this close. He was just right there with him. So that worked out well. That's how I would run a half marathon. See if I could convince the other people to make me look good, or at least not as bad. All right, that's the cube root function. That's how I think about it. Ooh, speed up. All, now they're always going faster. Remember that, but like my slope, my rate of increase, big in front of the cameras. Here, and I'm like pacing it out or striding it out or whatever. All right, that's it for my marathon analogies. Let's just get back to the math. Here's the math of the body you're here. This is fun stuff. Um, cube root, F the cube root is square root function. Square root function. That guy goes like that. Name. Square root function, F of X equals the square root of X. The domain, any X, as long as X is greater or equal to zero, which means interval notation. I start at zero with corners, go on to infinity. Range, gotta seem familiar. Y, as long as Y is greater than or equal to zero. And the range starts at zero and goes on to infinity. Only the positives in zero. Uh, y innocent, zero, zero. He is on to the positive range, and he is one to one. He is not an even function, because there's nothing going on here. He is not an odd function, because there's nothing going on here, where there's nothing going on opposite there. He is neither. His max, he has no max. His min is the origin. He's decreasing, he wouldn't be decreasing. Increasing, always. But note, his always only starts at zero. His left end, here's where you gotta pay attention, the farthest left I can go is zero with the x. And on that left end, his y values are zero. Right end, that goes to infinity. And he goes all the way up. He goes all the way right and all the way up. That's a square root function. Um, after that, we have the exponential. Exponential is fun. Notice this guy's not flat. He's really, really shallow. You'll notice the pause there was because I was thinking of good jokes, and I had good jokes, but not sure. Formula f of x equals e to the x. The domain is all real numbers. The range, just the positives. And now there's no asterisk to that. It's not positives and zero. It really is just the positives. Um, you could hit, no, you could do this number. That's all the positive real numbers, if you want to be fancy. Or you can be like a normal algebra one, so you can just write y is greater than zero. The range goes from zero, parenthesis this time, because you cannot touch zero, all the way up to infinity. The y-intercept, it's not the origin, it is zero comma one. He's a little bit better. That's why he's excited. Like the exponential. Oh. Um, he's on to, of course, they, we fixed the range for that. He is also one to one. He's not even. Things don't match. He's not odd. He's neither. Max, there is no max. This is interesting. He has a floor. He's not going to go past zero. But he also doesn't have a minimum. Because any number you name, like any number that he could hit, you know, 0 0.0001, he can go below that. He can go 0 0.00000004, right? Any numbers in there. Like he can just always, he can always get smaller. That's pretty cool. He's never decreasing. Remember, increase and decreasing, always read left to right. So he's always going up, none, and he's always 
going up, right? The left end, well, the left end x value goes all the way to negative infinity. The left end y value is trying to get to zero. Remember, a limit is not what you actually hit. It's what you're trying to hit. It is the edge. It is where I'm going. Sometimes you hit what you aim for. Sometimes, like the, like the left side of the exponential, you just get really close. All right? So it's what you, limit is what you're aiming for. It's what the closest thing you can get to. Where is that function trying to be? Trying really, really hard. Uh, the right end goes all the way to infinity. And it goes all the way up. Somebody is going to look at this and tell me that I'm technically wrong about my analogy for what it's trying to be. And I'm going to say, good for you. Um, the limit might not technically be where it's trying to get. But if you think about it that way, you will be right throughout this entire class. And by the time you will be wrong, you will have like, so detailed knowledge that you'll be able to say, oh, yeah, I understand that exception, right? So it's not going to steer you wrong. Just know that. And then people spend their whole lives looking for examples that break my good analogies. Don't be that person. All right. Know that what I'm telling you is perfectly true all the way through your entire high school career. Unless your teacher's really mean. All right. Um, exponential last function, rational function. Rational function, this one's so much fun. Sorry for the squeak. Remember, rational means fractional, right? Rational, fractional. It rhymes, it has to be true. Um, and it is, so therefore, it is f of x equals 1 over x because it's that number on the, it's the variable on the bottom that means we're always going to have a fraction. The domain doesn't have doesn't hit this line. Remember, this function does not hit the y-axis or the x-axis. He stays off the axes. All right? Um, it's off the rails. Okay. So domain is gonna be x as long as x does not equal zero. Interval notation is not so fun now. Well, it's not bad, but. All right, so the domain goes from negative infinity up to zero. Don't touch that. And or union zero up to infinity. The range, it's a copycat. Y, as long as Y is not equal to zero. And the range, negative infinity to zero. Don't touch that. Oh, by the way, now we're past that hole. Don't touch that. The Y intercept. This one's cool. There isn't one because the y-intercept would be on the y-axis, and this one doesn't like the y-axis. Um, it is on to because I've kicked out zero for the range, so now I hit everything that is in my listed range. And cool enough fact, it is one to one. I know where all my fractions came from, right? It's not even, but it is odd, right? Whatever's happening over here is also happening on the opposite end of the origin. It is odd. Uh, it's not neither. Max? There's no max. Min? Because of this. So on this side, it says there's no max. Something goes up forever. Min? This side over here, he says there's no min. Decreasing. Well, on this side, he's going down. Right? So from negative infinity up to zero. I would have enclosed that, except it doesn't actually touch zero. So, And then this side, well, he's going down too. By the way, he's never going up. Now let's check out his ends. His ends are pretty cool. The farthest to the left I can go, x value wise, is negative infinity. And when I go all the way to the left, my y's are trying to get to zero. Right side, my x's go all the way to positive infinity. And when I bring my x's all the way to positive infinity, the right side, copy x, is trying to get to zero. Both fractions want to be nothing when they go that way, when you go that way. They want to be nothing. How about that? Um, extreme fractions are the worst place. That's what I got from that. All right, I think that's all. Uh, that's all of our nine functions. Learn them, see how they work, get all the little features in there, and be awesome.